welcome you to another online program today. My name is Pastor Ted Leato with the Lighthouse Temple Voice of Christ for Gospel Church Ministry located in the beautiful village of Aua, American Samoa. We pray that this program will be a blessing to you. Our program will be in English, but before we start, I would like to greet our Samoan viewers in our native tongue. So today I would like to share from the book of James 5, verse 16 to 18. I'll read it out for you. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Verse 17. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. I would like to um, bring out verse 16 from the Amplified Bible. It says, the earnest prayer or the earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Amen. The heartfelt prayer, you know, whenever we pray from the heart, it says it makes tremendous power available. Amen. Tremendous, you know what tremendous means? It means extreme, very great. In other words, whenever a righteous person prays, that person unleashes him. He makes available whatever situation it makes available tremendous power, extreme power over that situation. He unleashes it. Amen. The righteous prayer. I mean, sorry, the prayer of a righteous man. You know, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 10, 1, it says, For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made a righteousness of God in him. We might be made a righteousness of God in Christ. Notice it says, we might be made. That might there, because it depends on your decision. It depends on you. You choose to decide if you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior or not. So that we might be made the righteousness of God. You decide whether you have faith that Jesus made us righteous or not. You decide whether you believe what the Word of God says, that we have made, been made righteous in Christ. We have been made righteous in him 2 corinthians 5 verse 21. so the earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available amen it makes tremendous it makes the tremendous power of god the power of heaven available on this earth whenever you pray so see how important your position as a people of god on this earth we're the ones that unleash the power of God on this earth through our prayers, our heartfelt prayers. Okay, verse 17, it says, Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have. In other words, he had the same feelings, affections. He had a constitution like ours. Amen? That's good news. You know, Elijah was not someone that, you know, he was born with some super ability or special ability. He wasn't born with it. It says here that he was a human being with a nature just like us. He had the same feelings, same affections that you have, you know. And it says, and he prayed earnestly for it to not, not to rain. And no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. So for three and a half years, there was no rain. Why? Because Elijah prayed. He prayed earnestly. Remember, God told him to pray, right? So we, we, we have to pray God's will. So he prayed earnestly that it wouldn't rain, and boom, no rain for three and a half years. What, what he's emphasizing, the word God's emphasizing here, that a righteous man prayed and caused change in the physical realm. Amen? A righteous man, all he did was pray, and he caused a change in the physical realm. A righteous man. Amen? What did he do when he prayed? He unleashed power, tremendous, not just power. It says tremendous power, extreme power. He unleashed through his word of prayer to God. Amen. So 
he wasn't born with you know with some special ability. No, Elijah. The good news is in verse 18, they're saying, hey, look, Elijah was just like us. He was a human being just like us. He had the same feelings. He was flawed too. He wasn't perfect. He's flawed just like us. Amen? Same affection, same feelings. In uh, the Amplified, it says he had the same physical, mental, and spiritual limitations and shortcomings just like us. Amen? But see, God uses, that's why we're called earthen vessels in the Bible, right? God puts his treasure, that's what he chose, to put his treasure in earthen vessels like you and me. Earthen vessels made from the earth. We're imperfect, but he uses us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it resulted for no rain in three and a half years. Then it says in verse um, 18, then verse 18, listen to this, right? He made a heartfelt prayer again, right? Because that's what you do. If you're, you're a people of God, whenever we pray, heartfelt, we have to pray from our hearts. Remember, Jesus said at the Samaritan woman at the well, that God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit, right? And in truth, those who will worship him, heartfelt worship him, right? From the spirit and in truth. Verse 18, and the earth brought forth her fruit, right? So he prayed and again, caused another change in the physical realm. And the earth, right? And the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth their fruit. Praise the Lord. So the prayers of the righteous man, when Elijah prayed again, he applied tremendous power once again over the situation. And what happens, they caused a change in the physical world. And what happened is the earth, the heavens gave the rain again. And then it says, and the earth brought forth her fruit, her fruit, right? In other words, whenever we pray, we're, right? Our prayer should always give forth fruit. Amen. Just like Elijah's prayer. Prayer of a righteous fervent, or a heartfelt prayer of a righteous man unleashes tremendous power over the situation and will cause it to bring forth forth fruit. Amen. When I when I think about this, it, it, it reminds me of the story of David when he went to face Goliath. You can read that in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm just going to bring a few verses here because of time. Uh, remember when David heard Goliath, for 40 days, Goliath came out and issued his challenge and defied the armies of Israel, right? And David overheard it in verse uh, 26, 1 Samuel 17, verse 26. David said, who is this, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Notice he say living God, right? Because... God says, I am that I, that, that I am, right? I am. That's what he told Moses. That's my, because he's always there. He's the same yesterday, today, and for He's the everlasting God. Amen. And, and David said, who's this uncircumcised Philistines that he should defy the armies of the living God? And if you notice, David was quoting the Abrahamic covenant. And you can find that, uh, which is the covenant of circumcision, because he mentioned who is this uncircumcised Philistine. Notice that. So David knew there's a difference between the Philistine or Goliath and Israel. There's a big difference. Israel has a covenant with the living God. Right? See, David knew that. And that's why he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who dares defies the army of the living God? And David was quoting the covenant. The Abrahamic covenant you'll find in Genesis chapter 17. Verse 10, it talks about that every male shall be circumcised. In verse 6 and 8 of Genesis 17, verse 6, God promises Abraham that he'll make him and his, and his descendants extremely fruitful. In other words, whatever they do, it's going to be extreme. It's not going to be just fruitful. He says, You're, Abraham, I'm going to make you and your descendants extremely fruitful. In other words, tremendous power. He's giving them tremendous power to extremely be fruitful. Okay, that's verse 6 in Genesis 17. And then in verse 8, God also promises them that the land of Canaan, even though they're going to be strangers in the land, just like how we are now, right? Jesus said we are in this world, but we are not of this world. So anyways, God said in verse 8 of Genesis 17 that he would give him the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession. Realize that. He says, that's your possession, Israel. That is Abraham, that's your, your possession. This land of Canaan is your possession forever, right? And your descendants forever. 
And you know what? Not even a lion, not even a bear, and not even a Goliath can stand in the way of people that has a special covenant relationship with the God, with the God of Israel, the God of heaven and earth, amen, the living God. That's what Dave, that's what when David said that, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is he who to dare to defy the armies of the living God? David knew his covenant rights. You see, David was quoting his covenant rights. He's like, man, we have this land. This land is ours. These Philistines can't come and take them. You know, when, when David was taken before Saul and Saul said, how can you fight this man? You're just a youth. This man's been trained to be a soldier from, you know, since he was little. He's a fool and he's a giant and he's a giant soldier. There's no way you're just a youth. And David said, hey, look, a lion came, tried to take one of my sheep, my father's sheep. A bear came, same thing. God delivered them into my hands. And he said, this Goliath is no difference. God will deliver him into my hands. And Saul was like, wow, this kid, you know, he's got a lot of faith. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll let you go and face him. And we all know, how, you know, the end result of the story of David when he faced Goliath. But what I wanted to bring out was God promised in Genesis 17. He said, this land of Canaan is your possession forever. See, David knew his covenant rights with the living God. So that not even a bear, not even a lion, whatever comes against him to try and take that position away from him, there's no way. Because God already promised that's his position forever. So David stood in his covenant right when he went to face Goliath. You come with me with the sword and spear. God don't deliver that way, Goliath. But I come to you in the name of the Lord because he knows, you know, he staked his faith in God. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And he's going to give you into my hands. And today I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds. That's what he said. And everything came just as they, because David knew this Goliath and the armies of Philistines were defying the covenant relationship of God with Israel, trying to take away their possession. He's like, nope, that's not what my covenant says. You're defying the armies of the living God. Right? God is always there. He's always present. He's the great I am. And his word will always come to pass. He's the covenant-keeping God. And David stood on his covenant rights. Amen? And he, and he slayed the lion. He slayed the bear. He slayed the Goliath. Right? It doesn't matter what stands in his way. Nothing can take his possession, the possession of the land that was promised to him forever. Nothing can, no enemy can take it. Not even Satan himself. You realize that? And we are the new covenant people of God. It says, the word of God says in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible, corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers. Verse 19, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. With the precious blood of Christ, we were redeemed with the precious blood blood of Christ. So we are a new covenant people of God. And he's, you know, and and we have the new Jerusalem. Heaven is our eternal possession because of Jesus. The Bible says that he raised us up together in Ephesians chapter 2. God raised us up together, together with Christ and seated us together with him in the heavenly places. That's your position right now, in the heavenly places because of the blood of Christ. So I just want to encourage you as a people of God, when you pray, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's what the King James Bible says. But the Amplified Bible, I really like the Amplified Bible. It says the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer. That means we got to always pray continually, right? The earnest prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Amen? It makes tremendous power available. You know, that's why, you know, the enemy comes tries to put us to sleep, tries to make us, you know, laziness is not good. You know, as, as the people of God, laziness, you know, is no good. We have to be sober, be vigilant. Paul said, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil. He roams about as a roaring lion, seeking who can he devour. He's looking for the weak ones. He's looking for those that, you know, that are just sitting on their salvation, that, that are just you know, thinking lightly of their salvation. And he's, you know, whoever he can devolve, you know. But we are the new covenant people of God. We have, we're under a covenant relationship. God is the covenant keeping God, you know. And we are made righteous by Christ Jesus. 
And that is our place, right? To offer our prayers to God, to release, to unleash tremendous power over whatever situation that rises up. Did you know the Bible says that, that the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent taketh by force? We are to take by force. In the spiritual, I'm not talking about the physical, I'm talking in the spiritual, we are to take by we are to unleash this tremendous power through our prayers. You know, and that's why the enemy comes to try to put the church of God to sleep because they know if the church is awake. That's why you look at prayer meetings, you know. More than half the church don't show up for prayer meetings, you know, when it comes to, you know, because it's like, because they're, they're, they, they allow their physical body, you know. Remember, the, it says that the flesh fights against the spirit, right? It's enmity, spirit and flesh, they're always... And Jesus even said that. He said that the flesh is, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, right? Don't allow the weakness of our flesh to stop us from taking our rightful position to pray, right? Because the firm pair of righteous people unveileth, right? All that tremendous power over the situation changes the situation. We need to pray, church. People of God, we need to always pray by faith. You know, take our place, just like David. He took his place in, in the Abrahamic covenant. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine who dares defy the army of the living God? And then he proved it. He went out there and he lived the covenant relationship that he had with God and he defeated the giant, just like how he defeated the lion and the bear. Same with us as a people of God. Stand your ground in your righteousness through Christ. Pray and unleash tremendous power over whatever situation, whatever Goliath, whatever the enemy tries to pray and unleash tremendous power to change in the physical to make changes good changes in the physical realm to bring forth fruit amen to bring forth fruit on the earth just like when elijah prayed but that's what we're doing now in the new covenant time which is our time we pray to unleash forth tremendous power so that fruit will come forth from the earth spiritual fruit that glorifies god amen pray that this message will bless you in Jesus' name, let us pray. Abba Father, I pray, Father God, for all our viewers that are listening in to our program. I pray you will bless their heart. I pray that your word will challenge all of us listening. I pray that your word will cause faith to stir up and cause your gifts, because every one of us, you gave us gifts, to stir up in our hearts, Lord. Lord, that we may continue to live for you, to glorify you, and I pray, Father God, anyone listening right now that has a need, I thank you that you meet all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Anyone that's listening that is sick, I thank you, Jesus, that you yourself, you took it upon your own self, on your own body, on the tree, all our sins, and everything that comes from sins, including it, sickness. You took it upon your own body, on the tree, that we who are dead in our sins should live unto righteousness. By your stripes we were healed. 1 Peter 2, 24. Thank you for your precious promises, Lord. They are always yes in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you back all honor, praise, and glory. Thank you for your blessing over your people. In Jesus' name, amen.